Hello again, welcome back. Sorry I was away for so long, but I uh, got busy. So here I am back with a V-Ray subsurface scatter to continue where I left off. I've actually uh, updated the scene to clarify and simplify a few things. So I've removed the HDR environment and now it's lit with primarily just two lights. Uh, one big area light over, over top and one sphere light sort of behind him to uh, grab some specular. Here's, here's a quick, quick render of what we have so far. This is a pretty decent setup. Let's go over some of the settings and what we need to do. We're going to take this a little further by adding the displacement because as you can see there is no, uh, no bump, no um, normal maps or anything, but this scene will be ultimately displaced. So let's uh, take a look at that. But first, let's take a look at the V-Ray subsurface material. So here's our material. I'm going to quick go through this just to refresh everyone. We've got, based on the preset, skin pink. Pre-pass rate, negative 1. It just subsamples a little bit. We've got scale of 1. That's critical because the um, this, this head is scaled to real-world units. So... Uh, my default units is centimeters. He's the appropriate number of centimeters tall. I suggest you work in, in uh, realistic scale. If not, you can use this to rescale your subsurface scatter settings. But since we're working in real world scale, we'll uh, continue. The index of refraction is water-based and this is already driven by the preset, but basically 1.3. We've already gone over the diffuse layers, but this new setup, I've got overall color driven by a texture, diffuse color driven by a texture, and subsurface color driven by a texture. A little bit of diffuse amount, and scatter color, basically a red, blood red color. The scatter radius is a, primarily a guess, a guesstimate. Approximately, I'm guessing that light will scatter about two, two centimeters, 1.7 centimeters through the skin in this model. It's to what your eye likes. There's no hard and fast rule, but uh, that's working for me. The phase function, that has to do with front scatter, back scatter. If phase function is at zero, about 0.7 is the default for skin. Phase function of zero would have even front and back scattering, meaning when a light hits the skin, it will either continue, that's forward scattering, or the light will bounce around and then reverse scatter, back scatter out. So uh, a negative number increases back scattering, a positive value increases forward scattering. So the higher this is, the more you should get light traveling through the ear, for example. So I'm going to leave that around where it was. The specular color should always be white because, as I promised last time, I would go over specular component of this. There's not a whole lot to say because it works just like the V-Ray material in my earlier video, but as before, uh, specular color should always be white on a dielectric material. His skin is water-based, is a dielectric, therefore the color of the specular hit on him should be the color of the light and not based on the material. So uh, if the light is blue, which it is, I have a slight blue tint to my uh, spec light, then you'll see that it has a slight blue tint and the specular hits. So that's the purpose of the specular color. Specular amount defaults to one. The glossiness blurs. The lower it is, the blurrier that highlight will be. In this range would be uh, pretty good for human skin. Specular subdivisions, I've just increased it to increase quality and we'll address sampling, some more advanced sampling, a little bit later on this video. Cutoff threshold is just how uh, V-Ray determines how, when to stop ray tracing. Trace depth for trace reflections, this is all pretty basic. One thing to note, scattered GI is off, that having this on will increase accuracy to some degree, but it will also slow down your render considerably and is generally not worth it unless you have a very specific reason to do it. So scatter GI is off. So let's take a look at what these textures are doing. We have this texture is traveling into, come on, 
bring up the tooltip. Uh, out color to overall text. So let's look at that map. So the overall color just determines where there should be subsurface scatter and where there should not. So wherever it's black, there will be no scatter. So that's hair, beard, fur, whatever is on your character. That's where less scattering occurs and white is where more scattering occurs. We've got the diffuse map down here, which uh, we'll view that. Pretty standard diffuse map, nice detail. Again, this is from uh, Lee's scan, uh, scan of Lee's head from uh, Infinite Realities. Uh, free, look at the uh, old video to find out where to get that. And then we've got the subsurface scatter map. I've slightly blurred it to reduce detail on it, soften things. Not, necess not necessary or possibly not even correct to do, um, but I found it more, you know, works for me. Um, so the last thing to do is to plug in some displacement on this character. So let's double click on his uh, shading group. Make sure you have the shading group selected here under the displacement mat. We will plug in the displacement. That'll generate the displacement node in Maya. Not important with, not important to uh, change any settings here for V-Ray, but it is important to change your color settings, color balance settings here. Maya displacement, or Maya generally uses displacement where black is no displacement and white is full displacement, but to get things going in both directions, both negative and positive, I've taken the offset of the alpha gain the alpha gain is set at 1, the alpha offset at negative 0.5. The uh, alpha as luminance is also checked, an important checkbox to remember to click because this is an alpha out alpha, so if you don't have that then nothing will be piped through the alpha. Alright, so that displacement hookup is done in the texture. Let's uh, do one more thing and select the mesh. We'll go to the shape node and under that we'll add attribute V-Ray Attributes, Displacement Control. Under those attributes, there's not really anything we have to adjust, but it allows you to make adjustments if you want. You can change the amount of displacement going on here. You can shift the bias. It's another way to control the, uh, the alpha offset. And so he's pretty much good to go. Let's do a quick render. All right, so while that's rendering, let's take a quick look at the uh, displacement map. I didn't mention what this map actually was. This also comes from uh, Infinite Reality Scan. So let's take a look at the properties of this map. We've got a 6K displacement map at a bit depth of 16 bits per channel. So it's not a float, it's not a 32-bit float image, but 16 bits is more than enough to um, to represent the data. Alright, so I paused it there just to let the render finish. We've got a 2 minute and 17 second render. So that's pretty nice for full displacement, subsurface scatter. It is a little noisy and I'm going to show you how to clean that up. So let's throw that into the V-Ray frame buffer, which we have here. And we can go from before and after so you can see what the displacement is doing. So, pretty cool. So now that we got that going, we're going to try to troubleshoot some of this noise. It is pretty pretty noisy. So uh, let's take a look at a little trick you can use to figure out where the noise is coming from. Notice that I have some passes set up. So I'll show you the, the uh, render elements real quick. Under render elements, you'll see I have a diffuse, global illumination pass, a reflection, subsurface scatter, and specular. Not only are these nice for compositing later down the road, but they're also really handy for troubleshooting where noise is coming from. So if we toggle through these various channels, you'll see the diffuse pass looks pretty, pretty clean. The uh, reflection pass also uh, pretty clean, not too noisy. Specular, again, that's good. 
and GI. Well, that's obviously our culprit. The Globe Illumination Pass has a lot of noise in it. And just so you can see it, the Subsurface Scatter Pass. All right, so how do we clean up the GI? Well, cleaning up the GI sort of brings us into some more tricks in the new pipeline. So let's first cover the uh, V-Ray color mapping section. If you remember previous videos about the Niederhorst or uh, adaptive method, you'll note that these settings are considerably different. We're now not, I'm not using linear workflow. I am still in a linear workflow, but what this checkbox would do would tell V-Ray to automatically apply inverse gamma to all textures and colors in V-Ray materials. I want to control that more manually here, so I'm turning off linear workflow. So V-Ray is not automatically changing colors behind the scenes. The rest of this is left to pretty default settings. I am clamping the brights a bit, so when these super bright highlights get hit, I'm clamping them at a little bit over one so that it's not spending too much time sampling pure white areas because it doesn't need to. Pure white is just going to end up pure white in my final video. If, you, if you're a linear workflow purist you might want to not clamp those values and let V-Ray spend some extra time sampling but for our purposes we'll speed things up a little bit by clamping output. Now I mentioned that I was handling my textures manually so let's go take a look at that. Each one of these textures has some extra V-Ray attributes added to them. You can do that by grabbing your file, go attributes, V-Ray, texture input, gamma. Oh, I actually don't have, well this is a control signal, it's not actually being used for color. So it does not need the, the gamma adjust in particular. I, I do have input bitmap input gamma adjusts texture input gamma there you go so V-Ray texture input gamma on this you'll scroll down you'll see the extra V-Ray attributes and I'm telling V-Ray that that image map has a baked in texture gamma of 2.2 and that it should and V-Ray will handle doing the inverse gamma to correct that likewise for the other color anything we're using for color should have this texture input gamma applied. All right, so uh, to improve the overall quality of this, let's get into uh, some V-Ray settings. Uh, under V-Ray image sampler, you'll see 1 and 35 are very similar to the, uh, the older Niederhorst method. Threshold at 0.01 is pretty good quality, but somehow we're not getting good quality here. We could, under the old method, lower this even further, go to 0 0.003, and it will do a better job and do more sampling, but it'll do a lot more work, and and uh, as many have pointed out, is slower than optimizing your scene. So let's do a little bit of optimization. That optimization can be done starting here in the settings tab. The old method put adaptive amount at one, which means that these settings would handle everything, the new method takes 10% out, uh, we'll put it at 0.9, so that means 10% of the samples can be manually set. Adaptive min samples just tells us that no matter what, any glossy parameter will get at least 8 samples to, to even start improving quality. With an adaptive amount of 0.9, that means whatever we plug in manually to a, a value, say because it's the GI having problems, we'll hit the indirect illumination and we'll increase the brute force GI subdivisions. Because settings is at 0.9, that means only 10% of whatever value we put in here will actually be calculated. So if I put in 10, it will really only be one sample being used. Technically, remember, eight samples is the min, so while this would be one sample, it's actually using eight samples. So, but if we put it at 100, that means we'll start to get 10 samples instead of 8. If I put this at 256, well, then we're going to start getting a, a fair amount more samples. I'm not doing the math in my head. Let's just quick go over light cache settings. 
in case anyone wants some specifics on here. We've got uh, a thousand subdivs, which is pretty high for for a low low res image. But one thing that light cache will do is use light cache for glossy rays. So light cache will help improve any glossy calculations being done. So that's why I'm giving this a few more subdivs. I'm using light cache for glossy rays, and uh, that will help speed up and optimize the uh, the overall scene. So let's quick hit render on here and see where we go. All right, so we're almost done rendering here. We've got, let's take a look at our channels again. Uh, diffuse, reflection, specular, and there's our GI pass. So we are, there's the old bit of render, very noisy up here. Don't know if you can tell this on the, the online video or not, but this is a uh, much cleaner quality after we've raised our uh, GI settings up. Again, just to remind you, we put this up to 256, which is really only using 10% of those values, so uh, it's like 25.6. So that's not a ton of samples. It could go a little higher, but we, we're we pretty clean here. It looks pretty good. Let's look at our final image. We can dump this into the my uh, slot here and do an AB. So there's before and after. You can see a ton more noise, especially in the dark areas. Um, and that's been cleaned up quite a bit with this. And if you wanted to go a little further, you could. You could increase uh, the subdivs because as we determined, pretty much all of the noise was coming from that GI pass. So uh, that's about it for this. In case the new, uh, all that sampling mumbo jumbo I was talking about earlier got confusing for you. No worries, we'll probably be covering a lot more to do with sampling in the next video. So, cool. Take care. See you later.